and my own particular top combo is a romance fantasy. A romanticy, as the youths are calling it these days. Hi there, my name's Catherine, I hope you're doing well. Today's video I'm going to do the booktube newbie tag. Six months after I started my channel, better late than never. It was actually because a couple of months ago I stumbled across Nikhil's Nook, a new YouTuber who is amazing. Her first video was this tag and I kind of considered doing it and then I got too scared. <laughs> I was a bit nervous to make a video that showed a more personal side of me on the channel. I was kind of hiding my personality behind just talking about books. But then I saw Jack Edwards make a recent video where he was calling for more book tags and I remembered how much fun I had back in the day of like OG booktube with every booktuber doing book tags and it's a silly reason not to do something it's just because I'm a bit nervous to be a bit more vulnerable and I'm not even gonna be that vulnerable so <laughs> that's the reason. So the first question is why did I start this channel? Like I said I have been a lurker on booktube for a long long time. I've had this channel since 2012. That's when I got into watching people like Paul and Banana's books and Tashopolis um, and that kind of crew. They were really popular booktubers at the time, Ariel Bassett of course. And then when I started uni I kind of fell out of that but towards the end of uni I got back into watching Noelle Gallagher and Chandler Ainsley. I love Noelle <laughs> so much and that kind of threw me back into the booktube world and then I was umming and eyeing about starting a channel for ages again just didn't want to put myself out there and do it until about six months ago a couple of things happened so basically I don't have a job at the moment long story short I lived in Edinburgh for years doing my degree living with my friends met my now husband we got engaged after a year as I was finishing uni just as the pandemic hit had a bit of palaver with what I want to do next thought I was going to be a teacher then had a mental breakdown decided I didn't want to be a teacher then I got an office job working at the Crown courts in Edinburgh whilst me and my husband did long distance we were still engaged at that time but his job meant he had to move to England and live there we got married my job was great and allowed me to be flexible so I got to move down to England with Alex and still work from home for the courts in Edinburgh which was fantastic but a few months into it I just started to feel a bit too isolated from the people I worked with who were lovely and great great friends but it was just a bit difficult knowing that everyone was up in Edinburgh in the office and I just felt like I was so far away and even though I could get all my work done there the kind of like camaraderie that made the job good in the first place was lost to me after that and I had kind of been brewing with the idea of writing a book for a while so me and my husband kind of looked at our financial situation and decided that I would quit my job in Edinburgh and try writing a book. That's what I'm currently doing, I'm writing a book. I was writing another book and that was a fail. <laughs> my first attempt failed. Now I'm writing a completely different book. But basically I hit a bit of a wall with the writing and I decided that I would make a YouTube channel. One, because it sounded fun and two, because I thought it would maybe be a good thing if I like set myself a goal of making one video a week on the side of me trying to write this book. It would give me more of a sense of purpose and drive. Something else to focus on when I hit a block in my writing and it would also give me that sense of accomplishment each week that I like to getting from having a job. It gave me a goal to work towards, a sense of fulfillment when I achieve that goal and it has been working so far. My writing has gotten much better. I've hit writer's block way less often now by having this hobby on the side and because the channel is book related it's fueled like more of a passion for reading as well which is obviously important for me writing a book. I'm so glad that I did make it because it has helped so much with just motivation and the actual skill of writing that I'm developing. I also just loved uni, I loved my time at uni and I miss talking about books. That being said the books that I read on this channel are very different to the books I had to read in uni and also the books that I had to read in uni kind of dimmed the passion I had for reading that I had before so it's been so fun to kind of reignite that. The second question is what are some fun and unique things you can bring to booktube? So I don't know about unique because my degree was an English and film degree and when I say film I wasn't like making films that would have been way cooler it's just that my degree encompassed films and television 
within the English literature space so you got to analyse more media alongside books as well in the same sense. So yeah because of that when I made this channel I didn't want to pigeonhole my sense into only making videos about books just because I'm on booktube. I wanted to allow myself to be able to talk about film and tv as well because I'm equally passionate about them. I also like when I can talk about books and film tv together like comparing and contrasting adaptations and stuff. One of the videos I've made that I'm most proud of is my Edgar Alan Poe video where I watched the Netflix adaptation of The Fall of the House of Usher and then I read all of the main Poe stories that were used in that show for the first time. I loved doing that because I felt like I was kind of using the skills that I'd learned in uni. I think the other thing that I wanted to make sure about this channel was that I wasn't again pigeonholing myself into one particular genre. I like having a broad reading taste and I like to switch up what genres I'm reading. Like if I find myself getting into a rut and I've been reading fantasy for a while I'll read a thriller to kind of get me back into it. And I really like discovering new things as well. I want to make this a channel where I'm free to switch it up and just go with what I'm feeling in the moment rather than focusing solely on one genre. Although I will say I do read a lot of romance. That is what I've discovered about myself. <laughs> <laughs> Question three is what are you most excited about for this channel? Six months ago when I just started it I think I was mostly just nervous and just questioning whether I could actually do it. Now with hindsight and with going forward I'm most excited about the learning of new skills that this is providing me. Like I said even though I studied film I'm not, I, I'm not a filmmaker. I don't know how cameras work. I don't know how lighting works. I don't know how sound works. I just criticise how other films <laughs> utilise these things. So I think that's been the most fun is figuring out how I don't have a camera I just use my phone I cannot afford a camera so it's been fun figuring out how to use the camera on my phone to the best of its abilities like adjusting the little lighting on the iPhone cameras to make it the best looking thing if you look back on my earlier videos it's not the very best even recent ones actually there was one where I forgot to adjust it recently and I just look like a ghost it's like the flashback is so bright the design aspect of it so I design my thumb nails using canva and again if you look back at the videos i was making six months ago they're rubbish they're so <laughs> rubbish i think i've gotten so much better at making thumbnails i think sometimes there are hits and misses but it's just making me so much more aware and mindful of the best ways to design something and i'm putting much a lot more thought into how i want something to look and I think it is teaching me to have a better eye in that sense and oh god I never thought I'd see the day I have never been a good photographer at all I'm not saying I am <laughs> I am not in any way claiming that these videos are <laughs> groundbreaking examples of filmography but for me you know I, I'll take it I'm proud of that the one thing I have been most enjoying about this process though is the editing. I love editing these videos. I have so much fun. I like go into this kind of fugue state when I'm editing. I just find it so relaxing and I always did think I would like editing and I am quite happy that I've started this YouTube channel and I am enjoying that aspect of it so much. I definitely I want to learn more skills editing because I'm just doing very basic things. I'm also just excited to talk to people. <laughs> Because I live in England now, I don't have any friends here. All my friends still live in Scotland. No one's really close to me. I'm an introverted person anyway. I like having time by myself. I need to recharge my social batteries so often. It's unreal. I'm just like very happy on my own. So I don't struggle as much as other people would, I think, being that far away from all of my friends and family. It is still strange not being able to just hop around to see your friend or whatever, especially after having lived with them for so long. And it's definitely not healthy. I think it's healthy to have social interactions and because I'm so good at being on my own, it's something I really need to be careful about not falling into not socialising with people. So this has been, I think this is going to be really good for just like getting me to talk to more people, more new people, People, more people from different backgrounds from me and also I'm just really excited to have made something that is completely my own that I can let like grow and nurture like a little seed that's sprouting into a sapling and I'll, I'll tend to it and I will care for it and make it 
better and that's a really fulfilling feeling. Question number four is why do I love reading? I think the main reason I love reading is when you find that book that gets you. Most books you read are fine or good or great but there's so very few books out there that like will get you in a deep deep way that grips your heart and soul and you can't stop thinking about it for days and days on end for weeks and weeks on end that will like stay with you for the rest of your life that feeling doesn't come along that often for me but when it does it is like the best feeling in the world i love getting obsessed with things i've always had an obsessive personality when it comes to things that i love and it's because i love that feeling it gives you it's just like a rush i truly think it is just like kind of like a drug like feeling when you fall into something and you become so passionate about it. You never know what book you're going to pick up next that could give you that feeling and it's always so worth like getting through okay books to get to that book, do you know what I mean? I also love that reading is a thing for everyone to enjoy. There is a book out there for everyone and there is a writer out there for everyone. I find that very comforting as someone who is an aspiring author to think about. Not everyone's gonna like what I write, definitely. People might hate what I write, but I cling on to the idea that there is at least one person out there who will love what I write. I think that's great about books. I think it's so wonderful that like, I could hate a book, but you watching right now, it might be your favorite book. And I also think books have such a broader scope than other medias like TV and film. Like, if you're in a very, very specific mood for something, you're gonna find it hard to find a film or a TV show that encompasses everything that you want. It would be much easier to find a book. There's probably definitely a book out there that has everything you want in it wrapped up in a little bowl for you to enjoy. There is always a book to suit a need. I also just love the community that reading creates. I think reading is a very solitary experience until you finish the book and then it becomes this sense of community and feeling where you find people who also love the book. It's so nice to find people who are just as passionate about it as you are and find people who are discovering it for the first time and going through the same emotions as you. I love that. What book or series got you into reading? I think my earliest memory of a book is Enid Blyton's The Faraway Tree because I would read that with my mum. She loved those books a lot too. I absolutely loved the uh, Rainbow Magic fairy books. I collected so many of them. I loved them so, so much. They were probably the first ones that I got into by myself. But I think the book series that actually got me obsessed with the act of reading was definitely The Sisters Grimm by Michael Buckley. I was gifted the first book in that series by my aunt and uncle at a very young age. Boy, did I get obsessed with that series. My mum also got obsessed with that series. We loved those books so much. But those were my Harry Potter. I loved Harry Potter too. But Sisters Grimm felt like my own because it wasn't as big as Harry Potter. And I was old enough to follow the books as they came out. I remember finding a fan made trailer for the Sisters Grimm film on YouTube and not understanding that it was a fan made trailer and being like so excited that the film was getting made. <laughs> and then like going back every few months to watch the trailer and being like, why isn't it out yet? Why isn't it out yet? Until I finally figured out that it was fan made and that I am an idiot. It's this book series right here. The covers are beautiful and I'll never get rid of them. I love them so much. If I ever have kids, I will be reading them to the kids. I'm probably going to push them on my nephew. I just think they're excellent. They're basically about a family of fairy tale detectives who live in a town where fairy tale characters are real. There's an ongoing mystery throughout the whole series. <laughs> and there's a reveal near the end of the series that knocked my little socks off. It was shocking to say the least. Six. What questions would you ask your favourite booktubers? I probably just want to have a chat about their lives and their books. Just like, just a normal chat. Out of all the booktubers I watch, I would give anything 
to be friends with Noelle, Noelle Gallagher. She's not posted in so long and I miss her videos so much. She just always gives me such a sense of comfort. She seems like such a lovely person. She's so gorgeous and she's not just my favourite booktuber, she's my favourite YouTuber. I just think she's fantastic and I hope she's doing well. And yeah, I would just want to have a chat with her about her life and be friends with her. Question seven is what challenges do I think starting a YouTube channel will be hardest to overcome? I think for me confidence is definitely the biggest thing to overcome. Like I said I put off making this kind of video just because I was like nobody wants to hear me ramble on about my life and what I like. But at the end of the day, I am having fun making these videos and uploading them and kind of interacting with new people online. It's bringing me a lot of joy and a lot of happiness after a period where I was really struggling <laughs> with like anxiety and my mental health. Since making my YouTube channel, I've had the longest period where I've just not been sad in so long and so just like trying to overcome this lack of confidence and being proud of doing something that makes me happy has been quite difficult but I think I am getting better at it. I've like gotten better at like sharing my videos on social media because I didn't at the start. I didn't even tell my friends and family at the start. Only Alex knew because I was just so scared of what people would think of me but at the end of the day it doesn't really matter because I just have to like tell myself like if anyone's mean to me I have the power in like how I react to that and how it makes me feel and so I'm not gonna feel bad but that is still a struggle so that's the biggest struggle also the other biggest struggle is not getting obsessed with the numbers the YouTube studio app I had to delete from my phone recently because after my bookshop vlog got a lot of views I just was obsessed with going onto the app and checking like my analytics and how many people had watched it and how many likes and dislikes I, I got and that's the other thing just not letting dislikes get to me. To be fair that wasn't so difficult I have gotten a few dislikes and I was just like meh. <laughs> Don't really care about that as long as like not everyone's disliking that would be that would be upsetting but yeah i had i just i was like i'm just deleting the app off of my phone i don't want to slip into like the dangerous path of correlating my self-worth with how many views i get on a video do you know what i mean number eight is when did you start reading i started reading young my family's big readers my mum got me into books quite young i don't know what age they've just like always been part of my life. Nine is where do you read? I'll mainly read in bed. When it's spring, summer and the weather's warmer I like reading outside with like a glass of wine. That's bliss. I'll sometimes read on the sofa downstairs as well if Alex is gaming. Alex reads a lot as well to be fair but mostly I like my bed especially at this time of year because my electric blanket's in my bed. So put that on, get a cup of tea, get under the covers with my book and um, that's great, that's a great time. And finally, the last question is what kind of books do I like to read? So like I said before, I'm pretty open to every genre. I'm not picky, I like to have a broad range. I like switching things up when I get into a rut, like I said, but there are three genres that come out on top. And if you have watched previous videos, you can probably guess which they are. Number one is probably romance, followed by fantasy and thriller. They're just the books that I gravitate towards most. And my own particular top combo is a romance fantasy. A romanticy, as the youths are calling it these days. Like, I like all books, but those are my top three. So thank you so much for watching this book tag. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you have gotten to know me a little bit better. Hopefully more booktubers take on Jack's call to action and the book tag is revived from the dead. I hope you have an amazing upcoming week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Bye.